Hello everyone, welcome back to the Canadian Young Physicist Tournament's channel. Today we'll be looking at IYPT 2020 problem number 10, Conducting Lines. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. We have already posted two videos on the IYPT 2020 problems and more videos are soon to come. This video will follow a bit of a different format than other videos. There will be no slow motion of the experiment and a bit more graphs and analysis. So let's get started. In order to investigate the properties of the conducting lines, I prepared the following material. I got some printing paper, some 0.5mm pencil lead, a set of sketching pencil from grade B to 6B, a sketching charcoal set, and we will also need a multimeter that is capable of measuring electrical resistance. From some preliminary observations, we could see that although charcoal and graphite are both made out of carbon atoms, they have considerably different properties. Charcoal lines appear to be much darker than pencil lines, and also charcoal lines also create more fine particles compared to pencil lines. Before we start to draw any lines, we should take a baseline reading of the resistance of pencil lead and the charcoal sticks. We will touch the multimeter probe to the 0.5mm pencil lead with varying distance between the probes. Due to the circular cross-section of the probes, it is very difficult to get a repeatable reading. I switch to alligator clip terminals in order to minimize the contact resistance. Now we can plot the resistance versus probe separation on a scatter plot. Then we could perform linear regression on this data. The slope will be the resistivity per unit area, and the y-intercept corresponds to the contact resistance. We could see from this graph that the resistance of the lead scales linearly with the length of the lead, and that the r-squared value is incredibly high. The resistance of the lead is in the order of magnitude of several ohms. If we calculate the resistivity by factoring in the cross-sectional area and the length, we could find that it is very similar to that of graphite. Now, we can examine the resistance of the charcoal sticks by using a similar method. This time, we will only measure the resistance across the two ends. Here we can see that the resistance of the charcoal sticks are in the order of magnitude of kilo ohms. The reason for this discrepancy is due to the differences in their microscopic structure. Charcoal is amorphous carbon. Its carbon atoms are not arranged in a regular lattice, and it lacks the crystalline structure. Pencil lead more closely resembles graphite, where carbon atoms are arranged in a hexagonal structure. The structural difference contributes the most to the discrepancy. Charcoal is also much more porous than pencil lead. Even when compacted, our charcoal does not reach the density of graphite crystals. To put this into context, charcoal has a bulk density of 180 to 220 kilograms per meter cubed, whereas crystal graphite is about 2,090 to 2,230 kilograms per meter cubed. This is a 10 times difference. Being a more porous structure makes it much harder for charcoal to conduct electricity, and the porous structure also contributes to the charcoal's high resistivity. Now we're ready to draw some lines. Here I used a ruler to guide the charcoal and drew lines using the soft, medium, and hard charcoal sticks. I repeated each line 10 times to get a dark and uniform line. Then I used the probes to check for their resistivity. I was able to plot out the resistance versus length graph for the dark charcoal. The soft and medium charcoal lines have much higher resistance values that exceeded the range of my multimeter, which was 200 mega ohms. The hard charcoal is the one with the most amount of clay hardener added. It is in fact the most conductive. This indicates that the fine carbon particles is a horrible conductor. By testing charcoal lines, we can see that the electrical resistance of drawn lines do in fact scale linearly with length, and that the density of carbon in the line is a critical factor that influences its conductivity. 
Next, I tested the variety of pencils that I got using a similar method. Here's a plot of the resistance versus length. Again, we could see that there is a clear linear relationship. However, the regression lines show different slopes. In order to investigate this further, I plotted the slope of the graphs of each pencil grade on a bar graph. The slope is all over the place. It is very hard to say what the trend is. I think the cause for this lack of trend is the inconsistency in the line drawing process. The best that I can do right now is control for the number of lines that I draw. I can try my best to use the same force when drawing the lines. This is probably the cause of the lack of repeatability that we see here. The natural next step would be for me to test different numbers of lines. For this, I used the B pencil and drew 10, 30, 50, and 70 lines. Again, using the same method to test for resistivity, I arrived at this plot. Here we can see a pattern begins to emerge. The darker lines are noticeably more conductive than the lighter ones. In conclusion, we saw that a piece of pencil lead has incredibly low resistivity. A charcoal or pencil line has a much higher resistivity. As we are drawing these lines, we're again turning an ordered structure into small flakes of carbon. That's why the pencil lead has resistance measured in ohms, whereas the lines that are drawn from it are in mega ohms. We also determined that the most important factor that affects the resistivity of the line is how dark it is or how many numbers of lines that is required to actually draw it. I hope that my crude preliminary data can get you started on your own research. If you got any results that are different from mine, please let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.